One of the things, the struggles, um, if you can kind of give some insight on this that we get with the with the cheat, it's very difficult for guys to be patient. Like the cheat is like such mm. a like, you know, they get they get going. It's like I really want to yeah. go. How what are you thinking? Are you thinking? I know that that kind of like the letting the ball get deep is a little bit of a feel versus real thing because we know the transfer happens out in front of us. But it's yeah. Mm. Are you trying to think about letting this ball get deep? Absolutely. Uh, in practice, for sure. Um, because the deeper that I can transfer, and, you, and you'll see, Bobby Wilson will do it with with um, Jonah Heim, who's a very good thrower. He has him on both knees, has the ball go right to his chest, and he's basically having him transfer the ball as close to his chest as he possibly can, and get a feel for keeping the arms in like almost like a T Rex or an alligator, um, and that really. As, as you keep going through your progression of, and, and everybody's progression might be different. Like my progression is different. I do bare hand stuff. Um, just like people hit off a T and then they go to flips and then they go to overhand and then they go to machine, whatever it is, you just have to have some sort of progression because if you go straight into a machine, unless you really know what you're doing and you've done this a lot, like the, the game's going to speed up. The ball's going to come to you. And if I say move fast, you're going to move fast, but you're going to go out and reach for the ball. That's just how you're going to. That's how you're going to do it. It's just, it, 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 it's just a natural human instinct. The ball's coming in fast. If you're going to move fast, your body's going to be like, "Oh crap!" and then try and go out and get it. So, um, for me, that's a huge cue because I, when I cheated at first, I would I would extend my arm uh, quite a bit, and I would I would get into some trouble with some potential catcher's interference uh, when a guy swings um, and. So that's part of my that's part of my early work and 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 daily work is I'm trying to let that ball travel. Also, uh, if you think about it in 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 pro baseball and and especially in the big leagues, the misses aren't that big, so it's you can get away with some things. In college, high school, youth level, the misses by the pitcher are so astronomically big that if you go out and reach for something, you limit the amount of room that you have to go laterally with that glove. So if you, if you just think about it from a, a mathematical perspective, if I'm cutting the angle off and going out towards it, I can only go so far to my left or so far to my right. If I let it travel and I go literally directly to the side, I have so much more room to go in order to not miss that ball that's, that's you know three feet to the right, three feet to the left. And that happens sometimes in, in pro ball as well. It, it's not saying it doesn't. Um, but being able to, especially this ball, when you, when you cheat, right? Like everyone wants to go out, uh, a ball to your right. If uh, anyone's listening and not and not uh, watching, a ball to your right that let's just say is a fastball or a slider to your right. You're starting to cheat, and your butt's going to the left, and your your legs are starting to go to the left. It is very easy to extend that arm out all the way, and a lot of times you're going to miss that ball because the slider or or the fastball is going to continue tailing away from you. It's going to continue to be going towards more and more towards that left-handed batter's box. And if your momentum is going towards the right-handed batter's box, uh, as if, if you are reaching and extending to try and get that ball, you will limit the amount of distance towards the left-handed batter's box that you can actually go and get the ball. The more that you let it let it travel, obviously, first things first is you want direction. So. If, if you're cheating and your direction is, is, is taking you way too much towards the right-handed batter's box, then that's, that's a whole separate issue uh, that probably needs to be addressed first. But once that is addressed and once your footwork is pretty clean and, and, and consistent towards second base, you need to make sure that you can allow the ball to travel so that you're not fully extending with your elbow and you're able to go massive distances to the left and right. Because once once you get outside of your elbow, we know this even as receiving, like if you're fully extended too early, uh, your your strength in your shoulder joint at, uh, as you're receiving the ball kind of like has a little bit of blowback or a, a, a two-piece like move as opposed to when you're really strong and you can catch the ball in some sort of extension but with some flexion in your in your elbow and then push through it in order to stop the ball from having any sort of blowback. So another thing we come into an issue with as we start to like uh, talk about the cheat is 
you know, we, we don't want the, the guys to get the right hand like to the glove. We want them to, to feel like they're moving the ball to their to their middle and to the hand. But mm-hmm. as we start to cheat, the hand the hand kind of creeps away with the turn. Is there anything in particular you're thinking about about like going some uh, this is kind of something I've been talking to a lot of guys about because it's something I feel like I need to evolve with is just the idea of like everything was always okay get it to here but the minute we start cheating it's like their hand could still be in the middle of their body but that means that it's still lengthening the transfer a little bit are you reaching out a little bit with the right hand or what do you think about with that so my right hand um in, anytime somebody's running uh, or anybody anytime somebody's on base in general I, I just make a soft fist um so a hard fist would be like the 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 thumb outside of outside of the hand like you're literally going to punch somebody um a soft fist would be like basically cupping your thumb so that I, I don't expose any of my the, my fingertips to a foul tip or or anything like that. And I put it right next to my belt line. Um, you can watch it. Uh, if you watch me play, a lot of catchers do it. They put, Some put it behind their, behind their glove. I don't really like that because a lot of times my glove is going to move to the right or the left and I don't move my hand. So a foul tip can hit my hand much more easily than if I just make a soft fist, put it kind of right in my – uh, crease of my right leg and and um, just my belt line, so the right right mm-hmm. side of my belt. Um, and when I when I'm cheating, I try my best to keep that in the same kind of area. It will naturally creep up because obviously adrenaline's going and somebody's running. So as I'm turning, this will start to creep up into the position where I need to throw the ball, which is kind of right by your ear. Um, and the transfer usually happens, almost always happens at that midsection. You know, you don't want to transfer too close to the ear because then you don't give yourself enough time to uh, get enough of a grip. Uh, so your, your timing is going to be off. Also, your direction might be off. By taking it too much to the ear, you might be uh, closing off your left shoulder. And then instead of being in line towards second base, that shoulder is in line towards like the second base min. And then that leaves you open to flying open and then your arm dragging all these all these different things for me i'm trying to be as simple as i can and this is this is something that i just think catching is so hard in general i think baseball is so hard in general that the simpler that we can make it the more chance we have to be successful and the more chance we have to basically be the best that we possibly can be so along this call you're going to talk you're going to hear me talk about like simplicity and just wanting to have basically one thing for all these different things receiving. I'm going to have four different, four different stances, nobody on extension side. So nobody on to like uh, outside pitch to, to a, a right-handed hitter um, inside on a right-handed hitter. So that would be glove side uh, runner on to the extension side. So outside to a righty and then inside to a righty. And that's it. I'm going to have four stances and I'm going to w- roll with that. Now my glove positioning and where I set my barrier uh, in order to kind of, and we can get into this a little bit, but um, the more that I, I, I know about the pitcher and what the pitch shape does, then we can get into that. But my body position and kind of how I want to set up and get to that position, it's going to be the same every single time because I want it to be simple so that I don't have to think about anything in the game. All I have to think about is recognizing the pitch, seeing the pitch and then blocking it. If I have to redirecting my hand, if I need to, if it's not in the location that needs to be, or if a guy's stealing. So, um, everything I do is for a purpose in practice for the reason of when it comes time to a game, I don't want to have to think about it. I just want to let my muscle memory take over 